Study session nine is on coordinate systems. Now, an orthogonal coordinate is what you're familiar with. An orthogonal coordinate system has the basis vectors neutrally at right angle. If they are autonomous, not only are they at neutrally 90 degrees, each of them also has a length, a unit length. Homogeneous coordinates are such that their coordinates are the same throughout space. The Cartesian coordinates come to mind. Colonial coordinates have at least one coordinate, a curved line. It follows that Cartesian coordinates may be orthogonal, rectangular, or non orthogonal but always <clears throat> homogeneous as each point in the same direction throughout space. Colonial coordinates could be orthogonal, for example, spherical and spherical coordinates are orthogonal and covilinear. And the local property makes them e homogeneous as they cannot point in the same direction throughout space. Basis vectors do not have to be of unit length. As you must have observed. The coordinate system UG is a pair consisting of an open set, which is a subset of Rn, and the map you are taking G to the real number line with invertible gradient and continuous second derivatives. The coordinate system X super K equals X super K of U1 to up to you that's parameterization where x from x to up to x indicate the Cartesian coordinates and its inverse where the Cartesian is in finite. is uk because uk of x1 up to Excellent. Let us assume that the underlying basis is the normal Euclidean basis E sub 1, E sub 2, E sub 3. Con covariant, of course. The GIs are the covariant natural basis vectors. G sub i, i equals 1 to 3. So the new basis in the new coordinate system. Let us define GG of U was equal to gx dug. The contravariant reciprocal basis vectors are given by g super k of u equals pride of uk, which is g uk dx. So the natural basis is g sub j of u, which is dx dug, where the contravariant or the spherical basis vectors are given by this packet of you. It was grad of UK, which is GGX of UK. Then the question start. Well, that's really a previous study session. It states that, as you remember, E super i dot E sub i was defined as gig. This super i dot E sub j rather is in g i j. So g super i in this case does g sub k of u will give you du j dx dx du k. Therefore, that will be the U I, not the U J. The U I the X, the X, the U K, which will give you delta I K. G sub K of U is the natural basis at U, and G super J of U is the reciprocal basis. The covariant metric tensor. Is G sub i j of u, which is G i of u, does G j of u. 
on the contravariance unit metric tensor is g super i j of u, which is g super i of u dot g super j of u. g of u is the determinant of g sub i j of u. Earlier we saw that it's also the determinant of g super i j. For little coordinates, the unit vectors in the orbital directions are e r plus cos theta i plus sin theta j. E theta minus sin theta i plus cos theta j and z equals k. We have now to get this unit vectors. And for spherical coordinates in orbital five directions, e r is sin theta sin cos phi i plus sin theta sin phi k plus cos theta k. It should be obvious how ER was plot. Remember the R and the formula R center cos theta I plus R center sin phi J plus R cos theta K. We divide by the modulus. What can we find the unit vector? We are going to get sine theta cos theta phi i plus sine theta sine phi j plus cos theta k. E theta and E phi for those suit. Here's the question. Find the covariant and the covariant basis for the Cartesian coordinates. You taking Rn to Rn. U of x is x, which is x1, x2, x3. G1 of x is d dx1 of x, which is dx1 of x1 e1 plus x2 e2 plus x3 e3. Of course, that's going to be e1. We're going to get similar expressions for e2 and e3. So g2 of x will be e2 and g3 of x will be e3. Generally, then dg of x is just dg. The contravariant basis vectors are given by g super 1 of u, which is a grad u, which is e i e g x i x 1. It will be e 1 e g x 1 plus e 2 e g x 2 up to plus e 3 e g x 3 of x 1, which is just e 1. Yet again, you see that g super i of u is grad of u, which is just e i. You will then see again g super i of u. One to g sub i of x, which is just e i, which is what why we told you that for Cartesian coordinate systems where the basis vectors are autonomous, then you don't need to distinguish between contra and co vectors to check. G sub i of u, G i sub i of u is E sub i dot E sub i, which is mm, the coordinate transformation with this matrix will then be a unit matrix of the appropriate dimension. As you have seen before, the contravariant basis is the same as the covariant basis. For the spherical coordinates, x1 is u1 sin u2 cos u3, and x2 is u1 sin u2 sin u3. F3 is U1 cos U2. Find the inverse. So U equals U X1, X2, X3. X is U1 sin U2 plus U3. U1 sin U2 sin U3. U1 cos U2. With U1 greater than cos 0. U1 is R, familiar R. U2 is theta, U3 is phi. So 0 less than equal to theta plus phi, right? 0 less than equal to phi, which in this case we have called U3, less than equal to 2 pi. And 0 less than equal to U2, less than equal to. This is, this is u1, u2, u3, not u1, u to power 1, u to power 2. The inverse 
for new lesson YouTube lesson five is q1 equals square root of modulus of each of these squared. That should be easy for you to prove. To get u1, square each of what you have inside the bracket and add u2 actan of x1 with loss squared equals x1 with loss squared divided by 3. You can prove this, you know, that's very easy. Likewise, u3 is actan x2 divided by x1. For the significant coordinates, x1 equals u1 cos u2. F3 is u1 sin u2. F3 is u3. U1 is greater than 4 to 0. U less than 4 to U2 less than 4 to 2 pi. Minus infinity less than U2 less than infinity. That's Z. Find U of X1, X2, less than. So U1 is square root of X1 modulus squared plus X2 modulus squared. You not even need the modulus. Plus as you add it for Spherical coordinates. U2 equals actan x2 by x1, and U3 is x3. Let us see how you can calculate the basis and the metric tensor. For the cylindrical coordinates, g sub 1 is dx to u1. This cos u2 and u2 to 0, which is dr. g2 is dx to the u2, which is minus u. 1 sin u2, u1 plus u2, u is r e theta. So that's u1 e theta. Remember, e theta is sin u2 plus u2, 0. We multiply that by r, which you know is u1. You get that expression. g3. Is zero zero one. This is dx u three. That is e z. G i j g sub i j g i dot g sub i dot g sub j. G one dot g one is cos squared u two plus sin squared u two, which is one. G two dot g two is u one squared sin squared u two plus u1 squared plus squared u2, which is u1 squared. g3 dot g3 is 1. Hence, the metric tensor is 1, 0, 0, 0, u1 squared, 0, 0, 0, 1. Note that g1 dot g2, g1 dot g3, u2 dot g3 are all 0. It's obvious why this matrix should be symmetrical because it doesn't matter which one comes first g1 dot g3 is similar to g3 dot g1 due to the symmetricity of the inner product the determinant is g which is u1 squared call that u1 is that so we can write g i j equals one zero 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 r squared zero 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 one does not calculate the reciprocal basis remember in that case we use super smooth so gk of u is grad super smooth and grad filter to grad uk is the dx of uk so g1 of u will be g dx1 to u1, d dx2 of u1, d dx3 of u1, d2 of u, just swap u1 for u2. That is d u2 dx1 plus d dx2 of u2, and then comma, comma d dx3 of u2. The similar expression for d3 of u. Calculate the covariant and the contravariant basis for the solution coordinates with the adjacent coordinates being the background coordinates. X is R cos L, 
Rice house is good. Bread is bread. R is F papers, so I spent to me. Papers is F and Y by F. And Z equals Z. So U is X squared plus Y squared plus R, comma. R term Y over X and Z. D one of U is D D X, D D Y, D Z of X squared plus Y squared to power R. So you carry that out, you arrive at X over R, Y over R, zero. It is cos theta, sin theta, zero. It is E R. D two of U is D D X, D D Y, D Z of actan Y over X, which will give you minus one over R, Y over R, comma one over R, X over R, zero. Which is one over R minus sin theta, cos theta. Zero, which is e to the back R. E three of U is D D X D D Y D D Z of Z, which is zero zero root, which is E Z. G J of X is the covariant basis. D D J X. This X is U one plus U two. One for u to z which is r plus r r to z z g1 is the ctr of x which is r plus the r to the z which is cos the sin theta z which is er g2 of x is d d theta of x which is minus r to theta r plus the z which is r to theta g3 of x is dtx is the z of x which is 0 0 1 which is e z So this is a 10 vector calculus. Yeah. In the beginning, it will be necessary for us to define the unit vectors in R theta and Z directions for the electrical coordinate systems. ER is that, E theta is that, and EZ is that. We have seen that before. Likewise, the ones for the spherical coordinates. Let us now look at the gradient of a scalar. The covariant basis is G sub J of U equals GX U J. Where the contravariant basis is then, as we have seen before. From equation 10, 7, it is GJ of U equals GX U J. We can write GX equals the U J G J. That should be obvious. Remember, GJ of U is dx uj. So multiply both sides by uj. What is it? It is dx equals uj dj. As g dot dx, take the value of that with g super i, to be equal to uj g super i dot g sub j. But we know that g super i dot g sub j is delta ij. The dummy index in this case, don't forget, repeated indices denote summation. The repeated index here is j. So this will be zero unless j equals i, in which case it becomes one. That is g1, gi dot gi is one. For that time, index j here is now i. So you get gui times one, which is gui. Given the scalar s such that s is s of u1, u2, u3, then ds is ds dx1, 
dx1 plus dx, dx2, dx2. So using instance summation convention, ds equals ds duj duj, which is ds duj d super j dot dx. Following from the previous page. Okay, even from 10 10 here. From 10 10 here. The u j, you know, the ui is gi dot dx. So the uj will be gj dot dx. Hence, the version of the scalar s is ds dx equals ds duj dj. Please know that this should be partial. Yes, dx1, dx1, partial. You know, we are familiar with that, of course. This looks very much like the formula for the divergent of the triangular coordinates. From equation 10, so we can write dx equals the uj Find the gradient of the scalar S in cylindrical coordinates given that S is S of R theta Z. G sub 1 is dx du1, which is cos u2, sin u2, which is dr. G2 is R e theta, and G3 is dz. Recall the metric tensor for the cylindrical coordinate system, G sub ij, in that the inverse is. One zero 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 one of R squared zero 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 one. G super I is a diagonal matrix. And raising the indices G super J equals G super I J G sub J. That becomes G super J equals G J J D J. We are in this case we have suspended the summation convention. The drag covariant basis is G super 1 plus G11 G1, which is AR. G2 is G22 G2, which is R E theta over R squared, which is E theta over R. And G3 equals G33 G3, which is EZ. The mistake here, this is G i equals G i j G j. Don't forget the only index that can survive this summation is i. This we have seen before. So G j i G i equals G i j G j. If you're not looking for G j, then i becomes j and you get G j equals G j j G j. So this is G i. So G, J equals G, J, J, G, J. For J going from 1 to 3, that's why we have here G super 1. is G1, 1, G1, which is G super 2 is G2, 2, 2, G2, which is E super 1. And G3 is G, G, G3, 3, G3, which is E, Z. Therefore, DS, DX, which is DS, D, U, J, D, J, equals ds du1 g1 plus ds du2 g2 plus ds3 ds du3 g3 which is ds du1 cos u2 sine u2 0 so that's g1 plus 1 over u1 ds du2 sine u2 cos u2 0 plus ds u3 0, 0, 1, which will be equal to ds, dr, er, since u1 is r, 
plus ds de theta e theta over r plus ds dz ez. This looks like the familiar gradient of a scalar in Cartesian coordinates, which is a product of the derivative of the function of respect to a certain vector component multiplied by the corresponding unit vector. Remember the unit vectors are ER, e theta over R, and Z. The partial derivative of a vector, which is a one rank tensor for higher polynomial coordinate systems. The Bayer expression is not this simple. We need another more complex one, which is that of covariant differentiation. Now let's look at the gradient of a vector. Let vector be given by v equals v u one u two u three. For general collinear coordinate, the base vectors, the basis vectors, are also functions of the coordinates u one, u two, and u three. In terms of the covariant coordinates of V, we can write V equals VI of U1, U2, U3, EI of U1, U2, U3. So the VIs are from a function of um, each of them is a function of um, U1, U2, U3, the new coordinate system or the reciprocal coordinate system. G sub I of u1, u2, u3. And we can write cuts of um, chain rule vv equals vi dgi plus vi gi, which equals vi dgi the uj the uj. Remember gi. And the gi will be equal to that. We've seen that from the previous page. Plus dvi the UJ, the UJ, GI. This is VI, DGI, the UJ, DJ dot DX. You remember that, of course. Is that DJ equals DJ dot DX or the UI equals GI dot DX. Plus the VI, the UJ, GI, DJ dot DX. The DJ dot DX comes from the UJ. Since, since the uj equals gj dot dx. This holds for all dx. So we shall define the gradient of vector for all dx as db equals db dx dot dx, which is a matrix equation, since db dx is a matrix. If you compare 1021 and 1022, You see that db dx equals v super i the gi the uj gj plus the v i the uj gi gj which you shall write as v super i gamma i j gj plus the v i the uj g sub i g super j of course gamma i j the gi the u And these are the Christopher symbols of the second kind. There are nine of them in three dimensions, since I and J must run from one to three. Note that gamma I J, which is G I the U J equals G D U J D X D U I equals the squared X D U J D U I, which is the squared X D I the U I D U J. That's symmetricity. Being symmetric, only six of the nine gamma ij are independent. 
we can recover the contravariant component of G K J I by dotting gamma I J with G K. Gamma K I J is G K dot gamma I J. Gamma K I J are the Christopher symbols of the second element. It is noteworthy that the Christopher symbol of the second kind is not a tensor. The G I the U J plus gamma I J characterizes the variation of the base vectors in space, since the G I S are the base vectors. That is, the basis is G I I equals one to three G sub I because how is this possible? Since gamma K I J is the case component of gamma I J, then the G I the U J equals gamma K I J G K. With summation over the index k, since it is the one that is repeated. We can also write the g sub i equals the g sub i, the u j, the u sub i, which will be equal to gamma k i j g k the u i. These are the increments in the base vectors. You already have the recording of third session 11, I suppose. So that is the end of the recording for page 3, 4, 8, 3, 2, 7.